Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about updated beginner tips for leveling up and progressing your character in this game for 2023. The instant level 120 quick t free opportunity has already been removed from the game, so the experience for new players has been redefined again. Hopefully this video can guide new and returning players on how to start and develop a path for character progression. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Upon creating a character, the first step in your Ragnarok journey is to complete the new Arriver tutorial quest at Pontera Southgate. Every character created must go through the series of tasks with your companion Senya, who will teach you the basic in-game functions. This include simple tasks like battling monsters, crafting a headwear, how to use basic skills such as play dead, and distributing attribute points. Once you've completed the tutorial, you'll already be at job level 10, which means that you can now choose your first job. There are lots of options to choose from, so I highly suggest choosing a job that you really want to play since the current gameplay no longer solely depends on farming efficiency to earn Zenny. You can watch some of the videos in my channel to have an idea about each job's gameplay and see which fits your playstyle and preference. ROM has a multi-job system so you can easily switch jobs whenever you want. After changing the first job, it's time to continue to the next part of your main questline where you'll learn other basic functions like clearing griff instances, unlocking deacons or assistants, and completing board quest missions. You need to follow the main questline in order to unlock gradually all the features of the game. You'll also receive the newbie growth system called Heart's Origin. You can level it up by infusing it with the Heart of Moment item which you can get from killing monsters in the field, clearing griff instances, and completing the daily adventure quest. Each node upgraded will grant abundant rewards and buffs that can accelerate your character's progress. You'll also receive the new topic system after completing a quest from King Poring in Prantera. This system has a list of tasks you need to complete, such as joining a guild, refining your equipment, and clearing various instances. Each task you've accomplished will also grant abundant rewards. With this, you'll get a good grasp on all game features you should prioritize to better your character. Next for the daily routine, the first thing you can do each day is to park your character near the music box in Prantera or Prantera Southgate. Listening to the CDs being played for 30 minutes will grant 90 minutes of combat time on top of the 300 minutes you get during the daily reset. This will increase to 450 minutes per day once your character reaches level 160. There's also another type of combat time called mode duration which is not consumed when farming. You can only get 180 minutes of mode duration per week and it will not stack if unused. Once you're done filling up your combat time, you can start doing daily assistant or deacon tasks such as completing the mission board quest 3 times, donating your guild, and completing the daily adventure quest. You should also do the event activities which are usually marked with a pink gift icon in the quest bar. To keep updated with the ongoing events, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the events guide videos which I upload every month. Completing these event activities will grant bountiful rewards such as gacha tickets, unlimited edition cards, and headwear. After finishing your dailies, you can now plan how you're gonna spend your combat time. In the past, the most efficient way of spending combat time is by farming monsters in the field using the Stellar Hunter class. But now there are additional options for spending combat time such as clearing the revamp rift instances or defeating boss monsters in the void territory. When just starting out, I suggest clearing rifts first as it will not just grant huge EXP and Zenny, but also useful monster loots, heart of moment, and gears for your character. Its difficulty is quite easy and can be done solo. But if you're having a hard time clearing the rifts on your own, 
you may hire mercenary kitty cats in your party to assist you in battle. Goro is probably the most indispensable as he has healing and resurrection skills. On the other hand, Wasabi can act as a tank as he can take 90% of the damage you receive. If you're lacking in damage, then you can hire Po or Mesa for their offensive buffs and abilities. Once you've completed the rift by yourself, the instant raid function will be unlocked so you only need to tap that button several times to consume all your combat time. Once you have sufficient gears in mid to late game, then you can consume combat time by either farming monsters in the field or defeating MVPs in the void territory. Aside from the highest possible Zenny profit, other factors that you should consider when choosing a farming spot are as follows. First is level gap, where in the drop rate and EXP rate changes depending on the difference in the level between your character and the monster. You'll get 100% drop rate of Zenny and loots if the level gap is less than or equal to 30. Hence, for a level 60 character, the most efficient monsters to farm Zenny, materials, cards, and blueprints are those which are level 30 to 90. As the level gap increases, the drop rate becomes lower as shown in the Traveler's Notes. Second is the Weapon Size Damage Penalty, wherein there is a damage adjustment when using a certain weapon against monsters of different sizes, which you can also refer to in the Traveler's Notes. As an example, a bow-wielding archer will deal 100% damage to small and medium-sized monsters, but only 75% damage to large size. Magic classes are not affected by weapon size damage penalty. Third, farming will only be efficient if you can one-hit kill your target monsters. There is no exact way of doing this as it depends on the combination of factors. You need to consider your character's progression as well as the properties of the monsters you are farming. You'll deal more damage if the element of your attacks has an advantage against the element of the monster you're hitting. I have several guides on farming builds on my channel which can help you achieve one-hit kill on monsters. You can tweak and test those out in the field. Fourth is that there are items that can further boost your farming efficiency. The meteoric chain reduces your time spent in farming as it will consume your combat time 4 times faster with quadruple the loots as well. This helps reduce farming costs such as the upkeep of buffs from food or the plant bottles used by alchemists. Physical drops may also use elemental converters to take advantage of elemental restraints. Getting buffs from cooked foods and meals will also further boost your character's power. Meals can be bought from the food shop while cooked foods can be created. You may unlock cooking from the Cuisine Association at the northern part of Prontera. Fifth and last is the monster spawn frequency and distribution. Some farming spots are better than others due to monster respawning faster upon getting killed. If monsters spawn close together, using AoE and splash damage skills would be more efficient. There are also farming spots where you want to tick stay alert. This allows you to stand still on a particular spot and only kill monsters that spawn nearby. This is practical in maps where monsters spawn constantly in clusters. You can unlock Stay Alert by following the adventure quest which will require leveling your adventure handbook which we'll touch on later. After consuming all your green combat time, it will become yellow. You can still grind with yellow combat time but the EXP gain and drop rate will gradually decrease. And once your combat time becomes red, the drop rate will be significantly low so it is no longer efficient to grind. But if killing MVP and mini boss monsters in the field, their drop rate is not affected by the gradual decrease rule. Next, once your combat time is used up, you may spend time hunting boss monsters in the field to get rare materials, cards, equipment, and blueprints. All MVPs respawn every even number of clock server time, while all minis respawn every 30 minutes. Just try targeting low-level bosses at first until you have good gears. Just take note of the 30-minute penalty when switching channels. 
Next, if you're considering spending money in the game, you may activate a monthly premium card which can be bought either from the recharge interface using real money or from the exchange using Zenny. While on premium, you'll have a 32% increase in drop rate and a 5% increase in base and job EXP gained from farming monsters and clearing rifts. It's also good for boss hunts as you can teleport directly to some maps. The advantage of purchasing premium with real money is that it comes with an offline battle card. This lets you farm monsters while offline, saving your mobile device battery life. If you want to recharge monthly premium or big cat coins for a cheaper price, I suggest using the top-up service of Smile One. Smile One is an international game top-up center which has been in business for almost a decade. They have hundreds of partnerships with game developers including Ragnarok Mobile so they can offer cheaper BCC and monthly premium versus in-game prices. Smell One Top Up is available in many countries across all servers and there are various payment methods you can choose from. Here in the Philippines, I can pay easily via Gcash, BPI, or 7-Eleven outlets and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smile One's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Next, there are various quests that you can do on your leisure time. The main storyline quests, marked with an exclamation point, are usually quite long, but they give out decent rewards such as headwear and costume. Next, the quest marked with a golden key will unlock a game function or feature such as Oracle Mirror, Advanced Runes, and a lot more. Next, you can do the side quest marked with green exclamation point, some of which give headwear and handbook stat bonuses. And lastly, as you increase in level, you can do two Singra Master Box missions daily in Lighthausen, Luyang, Eklaj, and Komodo. These will grant Zenny, EXP, and headwear. Up next, make sure to clear each weekly instance before the weekly reset as these give out essential items for your character. Oracle Dungeon grants Nolan cards, which give a chance to roll MVP and mini cards in King Pouring. Ponape Museum Island and Lost Isle will grant ancient equipment for gearing your character. Next, joining an active guild will be one of the highlights of your journey as having a helpful community will boost your gaming experience. There are still many newbie-friendly and casual guilds in the game that can help carry your character in difficult instances. But aside from having an active community, joining a guild with good facilities will also bring lots of upgrades to your character. Donating to the guild every day and clearing the guild dungeon will grant contribution and gold medals which are used for upgrading your Acer monument and guild blessings. Participating in guild battle can earn you praying card packs for upgrading your guild prayers. Lastly, you also need to invest in your adventure handbook which is another vital growth system. The handbook grants stat bonuses by completing various achievements, taking scenic photos, cooking food, and collecting headwear, pets, mounts, toys, cards, and furniture. Thus, it will require lots of zenny, crafting materials, eaten coins, blueprints, and pet capture materials. Although the stat bonuses from each item crafted or deposited in the handbook is quite small, it will eventually pile up. Just focus on the cheapest items first and then work your way to the more expensive ones as you earn more zenny. Also, as mentioned earlier, leveling up your handbook can unlock adventure quests, allowing you to purchase more adventure skills. So that's it for my beginner's guide to Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. Although the game can feel pretty overwhelming at first, I hope this guide has helped ease the start of your journey. Feel free to comment down below if you have questions, suggestions, or additional tips for beginners. Alright, that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.